I remember getting this um, once upon a time knowing that one day I will work with it. I have that pile separated for some reason, I don't know why, but I've taken this out from my uh, storage and I have not touched this for maybe two years or so, but I have shuffled it. So this is literally the first time I laid eyes on this since I put this in storage. So that's um, the world. I'm just going to flip through this. And I am not sure if there's other Bulby flip through on YouTube. I haven't really checked, but I thought I'll do this anyway. So the reason why I purchased this is because, uh, I don't know, something about the artwork really attracted me to it. And I had by then um, collected a lot of Tarot de Marseille with the intention that one day I will go down that road. Um, if you've watched a lot of my videos, okay, this is the miners here that would probably be most interesting in our discussion about the Picard. Ah, there is that, um, I've only caught a glimpse of the El Gran Esoterico, the Grand Esoteric Tarot. I've heard about it, but I've never really fully paid attention to it, so there is this I remember from a quick um, glance of it all in the grand esoteric tarot, the fishes flip through so that it looks like sh um, it can swim or something. Well, here it's upside down, a little helpless looking. So there's that partition. So now that again, there's that three, two. So now I am, what's that at the top? It says Heracleophonia Pittoria, made in Spain. This is by Fornia. There is a few editions. This particular edition is, uh, please be careful because a lot of people ask for a lot of money. Um, one person in particular asked for $80 US and then um, this is two years ago or three years ago now. So I don't know where things are at with the market now, but um, this particular one doesn't cost me a lot. It cost me $40. Um, so the, but this particular edition has that box and there's a tale, tall tale assigned about which edition is which. So I think there is a newer um, printing. I specifically at the time was looking for, oh, we'll go through that later. I specifically at the time was looking for this particular vintage copy. I think this was from the 70s. I can't remember. We'll, we'll look, look at that later. But a few of the cards arrived. I bought this on eBay. And a few of the cards, I think when she put the cards into her, the deck, some of the cards went like that. So uh, was separated from the stack and was bent completely at the edges. And I was very, very disappointed. I contacted the seller on eBay and she felt that when it was put into the box, nothing was wrong with it. And of course, if the bend occur as she put it into the box and the few of the cards at the very bottom or, or at the very top, um, at the very bottom of the pile as she slipped the deck into the box, um, was uh, slipped out and separated from the rest of the deck and become bent, then of course she would not have seen that occurring. So I was basically left to my own devices to um, rectify that. And thanks to the Terror Forum missing cards section, um, somebody kindly pointed me out to another person who has extra copies of um, a damaged deck or a deck which a lot of cards are missing. So, you know, the rest, he decided to just distribute the rest to whoever needs them. And he asked for a reading in return. And so there's that partition again. And um, I told him there's that thing again. One, two, three, four, five, and four. 
So I told him that I have never read for anyone before and I don't know if I'm going to be any good and are you sure you want me to do this? And yeah, and so he said, no, just go with it, just go with it. And so I remember it distinctly. Um, I used the Cook's Terror by Schiffer. It is the stickiest, most laminated cards I have ever shuffled. And I did a three card spread and I completely go off on intuition. I've kind of read the book as well, just to understand that I'm not missing out on the creator's intentions with regards to symbolisms and descriptions. And then use my intuition the rest of the way. It was a very interesting experience. And so he then posted me the replacement decks, which I believe are these ones maybe. No, I can't remember, but anyway. So all in all, it's a happy ending. And I have two copies of this. The other one is in another compartment in storage somewhere, but it's there. Um, I don't know why I bought two. I bought two of them separately. One I paid way too much for, which is $80, I think. But because of something that went wrong with that, um, with another part of that transaction, I think I ended up paying about fifty, sixty dollars in the end because I received a partial refund. And then the second copy I bought on eBay for about fifty dollars, fifty, forty dollars. So this should not cost any more than that. Um, I don't believe you need to have the vintage copy if that somehow have become a collector's item. I believe there is a newer printing that is cheaper. Um, the cardstock is Fournier, it's Fournier, 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 um, by them, and so typical of them are quite um, nice and smooth, although not as slippery as the Del Fuego. That's the Knight of Coins. Caballo de Oros, is that what it is? The Queen of Pentacles, or Queen of Coins, the King of Coins. Ace of Cups, four or five, that partition again. I have the El Grande Esoterico, is it? Or the Grand es Esoteric Terror coming my way from eBay. And I'll be quite keen to see them side by side. I'll do a side by side video as soon as I get that, if you like. Um, it'll be interesting to make that connection now with the whole, you know, um, I have that book, um, I love the color there, I have that book, um, with the Oh, sorry, my brain's kind of, um, I've just dropped my sister off at the airport. I had to wake her up at 3 o'clock in the morning to pick her up at 3.30 so that she can check in at 4 for a 6 o'clock flight. So, um, I came home and took a nap about 6, 6.30. I dozed off, woke up about 9, 9.30 and had my coffee, had breakfast, relaxed a little bit and dashed off about 12 o'clock, 12.30 to see my other sister off to say goodbye to her. She had to be at the airport today at 2 o'clock p.m., thankfully, for a 4 o'clock flight back to Sydney. So my brain is a bit like custard at the moment. I love the artwork. I've got to say I bought it for the artwork and I wanted to have a pip deck, a Marseille style or a pip rather, a pip deck, which isn't the usual um, classical old fashioned one. So that was my main intention at the beginning. And then as I researched it, I became quite fascinated and I thought, okay, one day, one day I'll tackle it. Um, so I'm just rambling there, sorry. 
So that's for some reason I have put this aside. I don't know why I've separated these cards. But that's the Terra Bobby by Fournier. Fournier? How do you pronounce that? Fournier. Fournier. Um, there it is. So, Spain. Um, Spanish tarot, esoteric tarot. I wonder if the grand esoteric tarot is that esoteric tarot. I really don't know. Um, so there's a little bit. So this is definitely the vintage. I think this is 1970s. I could have sworn I've investigated that and found that out because on eBay there's look like there's several versions with different with different boxes and different covers there. Um, yeah, this is the other languages, so we don't have to worry about that. This one here is the English here, who is Balbi. Domenico Balbi, painter, designer, and an engraver, was born in Genoa in 1927. After a course of studies in the Academy of Art in his native city, he moved to Paris, where he lived for some time to broaden his knowledge of art and esoteric, esoteric philosophy. A special mention should be made among his work to his fascinating series of tarot presented in the Municipal Library in Milan in 1961. He has taken part in numerous art exhibitions both in Italy and abroad, resulting in prices and favorable opinion of his work. He has also, he has also given numerous conferences about the Kabbalah and the symbolism of tarot and written diverse articles on metaphysical and philosophical themes. Um, and then you have the magician, and then there is the Aleph, and then the high priestess, this one is Beth, the empress, Gimel, the emperor, Dalet, the high priestess, um, is that her or her? Um, and then there's the minor, it doesn't say very much though, um, other than Four of Pentacles, Consolidated Wealth, Presence, Unsure, Inability to Share, Five of Pentacles, Material, Troubles, Destitution, Miserliness. Interesting that Miserliness is Five of Pentacles here. And then it says here, reading the tarot, the entire method, simple method. Okay, here it is, 1978. Copyright 70, 1976. Printed in Spain. So there it is. Um, I'll hopefully talk to you again soon once the Grand Esoteric Terror arrived and I'll do a side-by-side -side minor compar comparison of the minors. Bye!